It's been a long journey from learning about atomic orbitals in chapter six, then drawing Lewis structures in chapter eight, and finally seeing actual molecular shapes at the beginning of chapter nine. But have you stopped to ask yourself where the molecular shapes come from, especially considering that none of the molecular shapes resemble our orbitals? Something is missing from our understanding, and we'll spend the remainder of chapter nine learning about hybridization. Hybridization occurs when atoms blend together their atomic orbitals to create hybrid orbitals. And these hybrid orbitals have the shapes we'd expect from the Vesper treatment. To start off, I want to offer you forgiveness. I forgive you if you are upset with me. Why would you be upset? Well, let me explain using the humble tetrahedron. The tetrahedron is one of the most common geometries formed by things with four electron groups. Examples are carbon when it makes four bonds or oxygen when it makes two bonds and has two lone pairs. Four is a common number of electron groups because there are four orbitals in the valence shell of most atoms. So far, this makes sense. Until we imagine the shape of the four orbitals in the valence shell. Overlapping in S and three Ps doesn't look anything like a tetrahedron. What's, what's going on? Well, the orbitals we learned about in chapter six are atomic orbitals. Atomic orbitals only exist when the atom is all on its own. The orbitals which form molecules are hybrid orbitals. The story of hybridization goes something like this. Some atomic orbitals get together and decide that they would have better luck forming covalent bonds if they were more spread out in space. So they throw themselves into the orbital hybridizer and form hybrid orbitals. Note that in this example, we had four orbitals go into the hybridizer and four hybridized orbitals come out. Conservation of mass says that the number of orbitals which go in equals the number of orbitals which come out. Valence electron orbitals usually hybridize in order to form covalent bonds. The hybridization is a mixing of the orbitals and the hybrid orbitals have some of the properties of the orbitals which went in. The spatial orientation of the hybrid orbitals exactly corresponds to the Vesper molecular geometries. There are three ways to mix S and P orbitals, which I'll show on this slide before walking through each one in more detail. If we mix one S and one P, we form two SP orbitals. They each have one big lobe, colored in blue, and one little lobe, colored in green. They face in opposite directions. If we mix 1s and 2p orbitals, we form 3sp2 orbitals. The superscript above the p tells us we're using 2p orbitals in this mixture. These orbitals also have one big lobe and one little lobe. In fact, all hybrid orbitals have one big lobe and one little lobe. The bonding happens using the big lobe. The sp2 orbitals are oriented 100 degrees apart from each other. If we mix together 1s and 3p orbitals, we get 4sp3 orbitals. The sp3 orbitals are oriented in a tetrahedron. Let's take a closer look at how one s orbital combines with one p orbital to form two s p orbitals. Notice in the image that the s p orbitals are oriented 180 degrees from each other. s p orbitals form a linear molecule. Looking specifically at the energy level diagram of the beryllium atom, we see that normally beryllium has a full two s orbital and three empty two p orbitals. 
With this view, it's hard to imagine beryllium forming any covalent bonds since its S shell is full of paired electrons. But we know experimentally that beryllium does form covalent bonds, for example, in beryllium dichloride. And this is because beryllium can blend together its S and P orbital, making two SP orbitals. Each SP orbital contains one electron. And each SP orbital wants to find an electron roommate. So beryllium naturally forms two bonds using its two valence electrons. Very importantly, beryllium still contains two empty 2p orbitals. Empty orbitals still exist and are often very important during organic chemistry reactions. This slide is the same as the last slide, but with a slightly different visualization in case this way makes more sense for you. It also shows the bonding formed in beryllium chloride. Continuing forward, we see that 1s and 2p orbitals hybridize into 3sp2 orbitals. With boron, each sp2 orbital has one unpaired electron, and boron forms three bonds in a geometry called trigonal planar, which represents a flat triangle. As with beryllium, the unhybridized 2p orbital still exists. However, it is empty in the ground state. What happens if we hybridize all the valence shell orbitals? 1s and 3p orbitals form 4sp3 orbitals. This is one of the most common hybridizations, and it leads to the tetrahedral geometry. Carbon naturally has four valence electrons, and when carbon is sp3 hybridized, it wants to form four covalent bonds to obtain the coveted octet. But wait, there's more. Some elements like nitrogen have five valence electrons. When these elements have sp3 hybridization, one of the hybrid orbitals is filled with a lone pair as shown here in ammonia. Importantly, the lone pairs also live in hybrid orbitals. Ammonia has the geometry of trigonal pyramidal. Oxygen has six valence electrons. When oxygen makes two bonds, it often has two lone pairs, which reside in hybrid sp3 orbitals. Large elements, which exhibit expanded octets, can also mix in their d orbitals. 1s plus 3p plus 1d makes 5sp3 orbitals. This corresponds to a trigonal bipyramidal geometry. Here's an example with phosphorus pentachloride. Each of the hybrid orbitals, that is the 5sp3d orbitals, contains an unpaired electron and forms a covalent bond to a different chlorine atom. Remember that lone pairs live in hybrid orbitals, as is demonstrated here with chlorine trifluoride. Lastly in our series is the hybridization of 1s, 3p, and 2d orbitals, which make six sp3d2 orbitals. sp3d2 hybridization corresponds to the octahedral geometry. as exemplified here in sulfur trifluoride. Each hybrid orbital contains one electron and the central sulfur atom makes six bonds. I will leave you with this summary slide, which shows how the five main geometries arise from five different mixtures of S, P, and D atomic orbitals.